Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, <clears throat> and this is Rosie Bell, and welcome to Coffee and Crochet with Sarah, our live YouTube video podcast. <laughs> She's giving me kisses. Well, I've got Rosie here today. D during my video every Tuesday, probably every day <laughs> about this time, they're taking their third morning nap, Maximo and Rosie. Max is out cold. He is, when he falls asleep, he snores like an old man because, you know, he's 15, so he is an old man. <laughs> I call him my little old man all the time. But this is Rosie Bell, and I thought I'd have her show you what we did on Friday Fun Day, which is this, um, I keep calling it a bandana. It is a collar. Isn't that cute? It's just a little um, skull collar. That'll fit any size dog because of the, the uh, ties. And I'll talk more about it later. But she is wanting to go take her nap. She's staring down there at her poof, which is what she sleeps on for her nap. <laughs> Rose, you going to say hello? Oh, you going to give me a kiss? Okay. Kiss, 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 kiss. She's my sweet girl. Don't lick my lipstick. <laughs> All right, go lay on your poof, sweetie. Thank you, sweet girl. I'll give you a cookie later. She's looking at me like, where's my cookie? <laughs> My dogs love their cookies. Alrighty. So anyway, I wanted you to see how that collar looked on. But we'll talk more about it later. Alright. So, we do have a lot to talk about today. Some fun things and some serious things. And so, let's get started with our clean can. What you drinking today? It's like 60 degrees here. Let me look at my phone. It's 64 now. It is a gorgeous sort of overcast, sprinkly day here. And we've really needed the rain, so I'm really glad it is. And just to be clear so no one's confused, I moved from Parker, Colorado, which is south of Denver, down here to Mustang, Oklahoma. And I absolutely love the name of this little town. It's just a small city. Um, Mustang is. It's near Yukon. It's just right, right outside Oklahoma City. So we do a lot of stuff in Oklahoma City. Anyway, um, let's clink in. Clinkity, clink, clink, clink. <laughs> Today I am just drinking um, regular old Folgers coffee and I just added a little bit of sugar-free creamer to it. Nothing special. Um, I'm trying to cut back on my creamer because the creamers have a certain um, um, artificial sweetener in them that gives me a headache. And so I just try to do like a half a cup with the, with the sugar-free creamer and then use the regular um, cream for my second half a cup. Because I'm trying not to drink so much coffee. Even though I just love my coffee. Especially in the winter, it's so warming and so, you know, comforting. Although I have learned to like iced coffee, and I did not used to. All right, now before we get into some fun stuff, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my good friend, Kristen Omdahl. And um, the other day, her video today was not quite so um, emotional, but her others, the, the last couple that I watched have been quite emotional. And so just to kind of give you, if you don't know who Kristen Omdahl is, she is an amazing woman. She is gorgeous and beautiful inside and out, loving, kind, helpful, and loves to help other people. She lives down in Naples, Florida and was pretty hard hit with the um, hurricane. Um, she thought her car had gotten uh, completely ruined. It didn't. She thought that her storage unit had gotten ruined. Some things did get wet, like inside of her car did get wet and things. And she almost lost everything in her RV, but they got that fixed because she had some sort of gas leak. Okay, so um, she's struggling right now. And she made a statement that she might have to uh, go out and get an evening job. And I'm not asking you to send her money because that's inappropriate. What I'm asking you to do is to go to Amazon. And if she has a book, because she's got a lot of books on there. Um, if she has a book you've been wanting to buy, like her newest book, The uh, Crochet Power or Crochet Power 2, you can get both of those on Amazon. And that would help her out a lot. And she doesn't know I'm saying this. 
she doesn't. She would probably be embarrassed because she's a very proud woman. And she's worked really hard to get where she's at. Um, and so if you, uh, if she has a book you've been wanting to buy, um, go ahead, go on Amazon and buy it. And um, if you can also get it with an ebook, that way it'll just be downloaded and she won't have to do any extra work. She had some looting where they stole her son's um, computer as well as her charging station and things like that. And so just to help her out, um, like I said, don't say anything to her about it. Um, because she would probably be embarrassed that I'm saying this. And so this is just between us. <laughs> I love her. I love her designs. I love her books. And so I, I just really, really encourage you to go to Amazon, put in Kristen Omdahl books, and purchase a book or two, and that will help her out. I really hate for her to have to, you know, get a second job, you know, with everything that's going on. She's got a lot of expenses with having to fix her RV and things like that. And, you know, she lost her home not that long ago. Um, they sold it right out from underneath her, and she bought an RV and lives in an RV. And, and she's loving the life. This, this woman is resilient and strong and loves to help other people. And she's working hard helping other people that are going through some of the same things, if not worse, than her. And um, so, I mean, that's just the kind of person that she is. All right? So I just wanted to mention that. All right, now... Are y'all ready? <laughs> Remember last week I told you that the um, lady Donna, I think her name's Donna Spearling. I may be saying that wrong. I keep wanting to say Sterling like the bird. Anyway, she won our gift, uh, our um, um, September um, surprise. And so uh, she sent me a thank you card. And in that thank you card was a $25 Hobby Lobby gift card. I was so excited. There's two reasons. I mean, Hobby Lobby gift card. <laughs> but also, Saturday was I Love This Yarn Day. And so <clears throat> I took my, my granddaughter, because my youngest one, and her and I did some yarn shopping. And we did some other shopping, too. And I want to show you the things that we picked up together. Now, all of the Christmas was 50% off. All of the fall stuff, I believe, was 50% off. And the yarn was at 30% discount. You know, because they do the 30% off. I think it's every other week or twice a month, depending on how many weeks a month there are. So we got a lot of really neat things. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you, this is a big old bag, <laughs> is, you know, I love puzzles. So my granddaughter picked out this puzzle. It was $9.99. I got it for 50% off. Isn't that cute? I'm going to get it without the glare. Uh, there you go. Super cute. Five bucks. <laughs> we also got a Christmas one, but I she took I let her take that one home so she could work it with her mommy. It's really cute. It's got a dog with the with the Santa hat on it. I think it's a Basset Hound. Similar. It's by the same uh, person. Um, she's a painter, and then they make her paints paintings into puzzles. I think her name yeah Linda Pickin. The other one is by her as well. You should check out their puzzles because one of the things at Hobby Lobby is they have some really good puzzles. And I've bought puzzles other places, you know, Walmart and Target and other places. Their puzzles are great too. But it, I, I really love this this particular artist. And there's another one, um, Cobb Hill. I love the Cobb Hill puzzles as well. The pieces are nice and big. And when you put them in, you get that snap, like snap, snap. You know it fits. Okay, so we got a couple of puzzles. Then we went over into the Christmas area and I got some buttons. You know, I love buttons. <laughs> I got some reindeer buttons with some Christmas trees, some of the Christmas ornaments, and I got some of these last year. I really like those. And look at these. These are sparkly Christmas lights. And then I got some little Christmas stockings. Okay, so these are $2.99. They were 50% off, okay? So I got four bags of fun Christmas buttons. Okay, now I got yarn. Now, I bought three more of these because this is my favorite yarn to use for scrubbies. And I got Christmas colors. <laughs> So, you know, some Christmas scubbies, scrubbies, some Christmas, not cubbies, scrubbies are coming. <laughs> I love this yarn. It is the best yarn 
for making the scrubbies. You get a texture that's similar to when, I don't know if y'all have ever made the scrubbies that are made out of tulle, and it gets that sort of similar texture, but it's a whole lot easier to crochet because it has just enough stretch to be able to manipulate manipulate it. <laughs> I, told you, I get excited when I talk about yarn that you can manipulate it into the shapes that you need. And so I bought the green, the red, and the white, and I already have some of all three of these. So <laughs> I just, every time they have it on sale, I try to get some because I love to make these and I love to give them away as well. All right, so I'm gonna toss those on the floor. All right, so then I decided that I want to do a breast cancer awareness wrap. And so we were looking through all the yarn and I like to use the Simply Soft or the Soft Secret, but I, I wasn't seeing a variated, that I, a variated um, like an ombre or anything in pinks that I liked. And my granddaughter spotted this and this is beautiful. This is called Soft and Sleek Low Peel Fiber. The color is called Pink Stripe. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> but this is so soft. I'm going to show you this underneath this other camera real quick because it is so soft. Um, whoops. There's. All right. So this is it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? To me, it's more like an ombre than a stripe, but it has lots of different shades of pink in there. And I got three of these. They have four ounces, 186 yards. It is a medium four, and it's beautiful. It's yarn bee. I bought three of those because I wanna make a breast cancer awareness scarf, not scarf, wrap. And one thing to remember, when you see a breast cancer awareness pattern, you can do that in any colors that you want to. Um, for any awareness ribbon, okay? Then the other thing I got were these two pinks, and these are, are just regular cottons. Crafter's Secret Cotton. Because I'm not sure, I, want, I was going to make a, um, like a makeup bag, like a smaller bag, to put like a few toiletries in um, out of cotton. And I thought these would be just perfect. 229, they are, uh, two ounces, it's a medium four weight, and it is sort of a mottled pink, but it's a brighter pink than this. You can see it's a little bit different. And again, you don't have to make these things in pink. You can use whatever colors that you want. Um, anything, just like even the, um, you know, any of the breast cancer ribbons, they, they work for any color yarn. You know, um, just this is October, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And breast cancer awareness is very important to me because, of course, my mother had breast cancer and I did, you know, eventually she did pass um, as it spread through her body. And so, and I know that I'm not the only one that is touched with breast cancer awareness or breast cancer, people that we love, family members and friends that have been, um, you know, affected by cancers. And so that's why that's really important to me. Okay, and so I've got, I got three of those, uh, three of these, I got two of these, I got one of each of the scrubby yarns, two puzzles, and four things of, of buttons. Seems like I bought one more thing. Oh yeah, my, my granddaughter got a three musketeers on the way out of the store. <laughs> Hobby Lobby always has those great big, <laughs> you know. So what am I going to do with the red, white, and uh, red, green, and white yarn. It's going to be a scrubby, but I'm not going to tell you yet. I've got this really fantastic idea. See, most of the time when um, I'm working and, and deciding things for uh, designs, they're done three to four months in advance, okay? But lately, with the way things have been kind of topsy-turvy around here, I'm really maybe a month ahead. And I know with this breast cancer stuff, I'm behind. <laughs> and so the, it may not it may not come out in October. It might be January. So, but it's okay. <laughs> People struggle with breast cancer all year round, and other cancers as well. So anyway, yeah. And the Christmas one, I have an idea. I have it's what I do is I sketch it out, 
and see how it's going to look and lay out. Then I do a test sample. Then we write the pattern. Then we test the pattern. Then we take pictures. And we, you know, you know how all that stuff goes. And so it does take a while. So anyway, that was my fantastic shopping at Hobby Lobby. It hit perfect because, like I said, Christmas was 50% off. Um, all the fall stuff was 50% off and the yarn was, was 30% off. So we got some really great bargains. Yay! <laughs> I love bargains. It's like I say over and over again, you know, moving down here to Mustang, I have everything really close between um, Mustang and Yukon. It's right up the road. The only thing I wish I had right here is a Michael store. Because as much as I love Hobby Lobby, which it is one of my favorite craft stores, Michael's seems to have a lot of different things. And I love the Michael's yarn. And so I'm going to write a letter to Michael's and see if they'll build one here. You think, you think I have any pull with that? I'm going to try. <laughs> All righty. Now, the other thing I want to discuss with you is our new series, This and That. And the first one I asked you all, what, what crochet style hook do you like? Do you like, you know, the boy style or the Susan Bates style? And I really um, loved your answer. So many of you get, didn't just say one or the other. You gave me a reason. And that's what I want to know as well. Okay. And then this last week, I asked you how you hold your crochet hook, which was really interesting because from some of the answers from the previous one, I assumed people who liked Susan Bates held it like the pencil. And I assume people who liked the, um, the uh, boy style would hold it like a knife. And um, I kind of do different things. It's kind of funny. I don't really hold exactly like either one. And that's okay, too, because like I said, there is no proper way to hold your crochet hook. You hold it how it's most comfortable for you. I have tried to do the pencil hold and it hurts my wrist like crazy. And so, and I don't have arthritis in my wrist. And so I decided to go back to the way I, I learned from library books, looking at some of the pictures in there, you know, uh, 40 something years ago. <laughs> so this last Sunday at church, someone asked me how long my husband and I have been married. And I said, well, we're going to be married 41 years in December. And she goes, were you in the womb when you got married? <laughs> I'm like, no, we're not like that. <laughs> so it's kind of funny because I've been I've been crocheting longer than I was married. So <laughs> any who's Um we have a video that we're going to do tomorrow for the this and that. And we're going to begin talking about yarn more. We talked a little bit about hooks. And we're going to begin talking more about yarns and how you hold your yarn and what you prefer this, that, or the other. You know, it's going to kind of be fun. Because this is where, like I said, you get a chance to give your opinion. And it helps me understand where you're at in your crochet journey and the kinds of things that you like and the things you don't like. But also keep in mind, I'm not going to be able to please everybody. If you prefer a certain kind of yarn, like say homespun and somebody else prefers a DK weight, I'm not going to be able to, you know, uh, please absolutely everybody, but it will give me a better understanding of what you're looking for. All right. And so that's the whole purpose of the this and that videos is just to put a small video out there, ask a question and help me learn about you. And you can learn a little bit more about me as well. Although one person sent me a message last week and told me that I'm TMI giving too much information about myself. <laughs> so it's OK. I don't care. <laughs> I've just always been a talkative person. I've always um, just spilled the beans. I can't keep a secret. Don't tell me a Christmas secret. Don't tell me a birthday secret because I'm going to tell. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> All righty. So let's talk about what's new this week at Posh Pooch Designs. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is this scarf back here. This is our Step Into Fall scarf. Now, I originally wrote this pattern, I think, September 2016. And I used the um, Karen Cake. Here's one of the Karen Cakes right here. And the one that I used was called Red Velvet. 
Now, I wanted to update the pattern and add some new pictures, and I wanted it to have more of a fall look. And I was looking at my yarn, and I found this. And this is rum raisin, which is what this one is made with. Is called rum raisin. And I originally designed this pattern for some of the cake yarns, because 2016, there weren't a lot of cake yarns out there like there are now. And I love the ones like this that have the long stripes in them long stripes of color and that's kind of the reason that I was wanting to go with this sort of a stair step look and I think it looks beautiful with those long stripes of color although it looks beautiful in ombres I've done it in a I think it was a purple ombre um, red heart and you can use any ombre you can use any variegated whatever colors that you want to it's super easy once you you just learn how to do the stair steps and it's super easy and then at the bottom here we added this fun chain um fringe and i like it i think that it adds a, just enough class i call it class and randomness because the the way the chains lay are a little bit random <laughs> you know and i like it it just adds a little pop of something to the edge of it and you don't have to put that on there if you don't want to of course so that, and you can make that um, scarf with one of these cakes, which is about seven ounces. I think it's 7.1 ounce um, cake. All right. So if you got one of these hanging out and you don't know what to do with it, make that beautiful scarf and give it away as a Christmas gift. All right. <laughs> the other thing we did was the, the collar that I showed you that Rosie was wearing. That's why her call, I took her collar off. But um, this is Maximo's. I was going to put it in my hair, but it's covered in his hair. I don't know if you can see that. His hair is all over it. But um, this is another one that I did when we first got Maximo. So Maximo's 15, right? So he was a, maybe a year old when I first designed this pattern. And it's super simple, super easy. And so what we did is we went in and updated the pattern, added a bunch of new pictures, and kind of reworded some of it. So if you click on it, you're going to see that, that it's um, rewritten a little bit if you've used it before. But this is so versatile because it is done with ties. And you can wear it yourself. You can wear it as a headband. And so it's really fun. I think it'd be really great for a group picture for everybody in the group, the cat, the goat, whoever, to have one of these on. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> and also this little skull is, I we re, uh, rewritten how we uh, make it because I wanted it to be shaped a little bit better. I wanted it to be a little more narrow at the bottom so that it looks like the bottom of a skull. And you can use that applique for anything. You can put it on anything you want to. And so that's one. That's what we did for our Friday fun day. All right, now, the other thing we did was that creepy eyeball. You can see there's one back there staring at you. And here's one right here. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I just love this. And let me tell you the funny story. Okay, so um, what, what made me think of this is, I don't know if it was last year or a couple of years ago, when we still lived in Colorado, my neighbor... We all have, in that area, we all had blue spruce trees, beautiful trees, big, gorgeous Colorado blue spruces. Well, my neighbor took Frisbees, okay? You know how big a Frisbee is? And they painted them to look like this, you know? And they would they would get one like that was blue, and then they'd paint the black part, paint the white part, and put some of the stringy things just with like paint and then they would spray it over with glossy clear paint and then they'd stick them up in their trees like they were looking at the neighbors it was hilarious i loved it i thought it was amazing and fun and so i was thinking i wanted to do something fun and then i remembered those and so i thought i'll just make some pillows they're super easy you can use two strands of um, worsted weight number four or you could use a chunky number five or a chunky number six it'll make them the sizes different of course a little smaller a little bigger depending on what you use but I wanted to use up my leftover yarns and so I used my green and blue on that one um, and I was going to take them out front because in the front of my house we have some trees and we have they're called crepe myrtles and they have beautiful pink and red flowers on them and I was going to take a picture of them up in one of those trees. So I took it and I went to put it up there. And this big spider web 
moved forward because I had those clips. I was just going to clip it up there. And the spider itself is, is really, the body of it's about this big and then it has, you know, the eight legs. But they're really weird because there's like two legs up here and two legs down here. Anyway, it's a beautiful spider, but it scared the daylights out of me, literally. I mean, I was like, Wah! my neighbors probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> So I thought, well, I'll move down to the next one because I think there's one, two, three, four of them of those big tree things, um, crepe myrtles. So I go to, to move over to put it on the other one and there's a spider going this, a spider web going this way and it was just a little round, like your typical little spider. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm just going to put these in the window. <laughs> and so I went to the back of the house and I stuck them inside the window. <laughs> So I couldn't put them in the tree and not with two big spiders out there. <laughs> okay, just so you know, I am afraid of spiders. I'm afraid of snakes and any kind of bugs, really, except for flies. <laughs> and flies are just a nuisance and I just flack them away. <laughs> so anyway, that's why there wasn't any pictures of my creepy eyeballs <laughs> in the trees it's, uh, this is a newer neighborhood and all the trees are small they don't have any like great big trees and i don't know of any pine trees around here and i i think that's one thing i do miss about um colorado are those beautiful blue spruce and pine trees we had all over our property because i used them a lot for um you know displaying things in out there and stuff so anyway i loved putting them in the window because it looks like they're looking at you <laughs> And they're super easy to make. You know, they take hardly any yarn. and They're just fun. <laughs> they're just super fun. I'm going to put them in the front window for trick-or-treat night and put like a light down over toward just, just point the lamp down over so the kids can see it. We're probably going to hand out candy from the garage door or open up the garage door and from the, the driveway because my dogs are going to go crazy. They are not used to having people come by. When we lived in Colorado, we lived on, you know, most of the houses in the area we lived on were five or, you know, between five and 10 acres and kids just aren't going to walk that to trick or treat. So we didn't have trick or treaters for almost 10 years. And so I'm really looking forward to having trick or treaters. I asked on my, on our, um, our, um, um, HOA, our homeowners association, uh, group, since we don't own this house, but I'm in that because of information that happens in this group. And so um, I asked, I said, do we get any trick-or-treaters? And the one girl says, not really, not that many, maybe a hundred or two. I'm like, what? <laughs> I got to go get some candy. <laughs> so anyway, there's lots of fun. You know, the kids can throw them around and play with them because they're just squishy, you know, and fun. Great to decorate with or you just want to stick them on your chair or something. Anyway, it was just super duper fun. You may have them all, Kim. What's, I'm terrified of spiders. Oh, praying mantis. Well, you know, praying mantis, the woman, after she mates with the man, she eats him, right? <laughs> praying mantises are really interesting animals, though. They're really fun to kind of watch. Just, just stay back. Yeah, I'm just not a bug person, which is weird because I've had gardens for a long time. Same thing as snakes. They get in your garden, and it's weird. I just don't, I don't like snakes and I don't like spiders. Okay, I need a drink of coffee. I've kind of got myself upset over the spider situation. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here in Mustang, they do have at the park, Mustang Park, a big thing, kind of like a trick-or-treat sort of thing, sort of a, sort of a carnival atmosphere and I know a lot of kids will be doing that as well but I, I'm just kind of excited about getting to hand out candy and I was asking my granddaughter I said do you want to come over and hand out candy with me she goes no I'm gonna trick or treat I'm like okay <laughs> my grandson I think he's too he thinks he's too old so <laughs> ladybugs okay let me tell you a story about ladybugs Kim asked me about ladybugs when we lived in Tulsa about 12 years ago, before we moved to Colorado, that's where I had an enormous garden. We, I gardened every year. I canned green beans. We had uh, watermelons and cantaloupe and all kinds of cucumbers and tomatoes and all kinds. I did okra and everything. So one day I went out back and there were three million ladybugs in my garden. It totally freaked me out. 
I love ladybugs. I do. I love them. They're super cute. But they were like all over the back of our house. And our and our garden was, was pretty close to the house, but not like right up on the house. It was back a ways. And I walked out there because I was just going to grab some lettuce and some tomatoes and some cucumbers and some other things, peppers and stuff, for a salad. And I was like, oh, my word, there are three million ladybugs out here. They're, they're flying around. And I go over to the garden and they start landing all over me. And I'm like freaking out, screaming, running in the house. And my husband's like, what is your problem? <laughs> and then there's ladybugs out there. And he's like, what? <laughs> I guess they, I don't know if they migrate through or what. But <laughs> yeah, I remember that song. I don't like spiders and snakes. I sing it all the time to my grandkids. <laughs> Okay, Jolene has a, has a joke. Why don't monsters eat ghosts? Because they taste like... Oh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I don't want to say that because I'm afraid it'll be uh, wrong and then YouTube won't let me <laughs> post the video. They're, I, um, they're very, getting a lot stricter about language. <laughs> so, anywho... <laughs> All right, I've kept you guys long enough. We had a good time today. And be sure, and if you're someone who likes to shop at Hobby Lobby, check out, go when they're having their 30% off because it's a great time to get yarn you haven't used before and try it out without having to spend full price. So, and um, I, I miss the the coupons, you know, the more like a 40% off one item or something. I used to use those all the time. But they do have a lot of sales all the time, you know, like right now, the Christmas and the and the uh, fall stuff. And so, you know, and it's the same thing with uh, Joann's and Michael's. Now, I don't know if Joann's still has coupons because I haven't been there since uh, Colorado. But uh, Michael's, they usually have coupons as well. So I don't know, you know. Oh, you guys are hilarious. What it's like to be kissed by a vampire. It's a pain in the neck. <laughs> Yes, I'm easily amused. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to let you go on that. I have got to go shopping today and get some veggies. All righty, so thank you all for being with me today. Can't do it without you. I always have trouble making my heart. <laughs> I can't do this without all of you, and I'll see you all next week. <laughs>